Since the dawn of civilization, waterways have been an important means of transportation. Long before there were any roads or railroads, waterways were transporting people and moving materials all over the world. Today, waterways still provide efficient, economical, and energy-saving transportation for countless products ranging from aircraft to zinc. The United States has more than 25,000 miles of navigable waterways, transporting billions of dollars worth of commerce for Americans. In the southeast, the Tennessee River is a major artery in America's waterway system. South of the Tennessee River is a smaller river, the Tom Bigbee, which flows from northeast Mississippi to another busy traffic artery leading to the Gulf of Mexico near Mobile, Alabama. Constructing a navigation channel in this sleepy, winding river and connecting it with the Tennessee River will provide a long-needed link in America's waterway system. The reason for this is clear. When the present waterway routes are compared with those possible, when the Tennessee and Tom Bigby rivers are joined. A towboat pushing barges from the river port of Chattanooga to the seaport of Mobile currently travels south, west, and north along the Tennessee River to Paducah, Kentucky, then farther west along the Ohio River to Cairo, Illinois, where it heads south down the Mississippi River to New Orleans and then east along the Gulf Intracoastal Waterway to Mobile. The total distance is 1,530 miles, and the trip requires more than 16 days. By using a shortcut from the Tennessee to the Tom Bigby River, the trip can be shortened to 698 miles and about nine days, a significant savings in time and energy. Likewise, a river tow coming from Louisville, Kentucky to Mobile can save 408 miles and three and a half days by using the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway. Construction on the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway started in 1972 and the Gainesville Lock and Dam was the first structure completed. As the massive lock gates opened to river traffic on October 1st, 1978, a centuries-old dream began to come true. The Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway, or Tim Tom as it is called, is one of the largest civil works projects ever undertaken in the United States. Scheduled for completion in the mid-80s, the waterway will cost more than one and one-half billion dollars and will benefit all America. Shippers in a large section of the country will save time and money because of the more convenient route to and from the ports on the Eastern Gulf. Commerce and industry will be stimulated by the availability of efficient water transportation. New industrial plants will be attracted to the area. Consumers will benefit from lower costs of goods and everyone will benefit from the savings in energy. The Ten Tom will extend from Pickwick Lake on the Tennessee River to the Black Warrior Tom Bigby Waterway at Demopolis, Alabama, a distance of 232 miles. It will provide a navigation channel nine feet deep and 300 feet wide. Five dams and 10 locks will provide navigable depth and will lower and raise waterway tows a total of 341 feet, like a series of giant steps. All lock chambers will be 110 feet wide and 600 feet long, which will accommodate a towboat with eight barges. The Den Tom actually comprises three different types of waterway. Moving south from the Tennessee River, the waterway follows an excavated cut through the natural divide between the Tennessee and Tom Bigby River valleys to the Bay Springs Lock and Dam. This portion is called the Divide Section. This section is the most ambitious effort of the entire project. To connect the two rivers, 27 miles of this 40-mile section is being carved out of the hills. The cut 
is a 150 million cubic yard excavation project. The maximum depth of the cut of the actual divide will be 175 feet. The average depth will be 50 feet. Railroad lines, vital to the area and to the success of the waterway, are being relocated and aligned with the divide channel. Highway bridges are being built to allow for the passage of river tows. Land had to be acquired, and the project had to be carefully planned and engineered to prevent unnecessary damage to the environment. The Bay Springs Lock and Dam is at the southern end of the divide section. The earth and rock-filled dam will be 100 feet high and over half a mile long. The lock will have a lift of 84 feet, the highest on the waterway. The Bay Springs Lake will have an area of 7,000 acres. From Bay Springs, the waterway will flow past Fulton, Mississippi, to an area several miles south of Amory, Mississippi. This part of the Ten Tom is called the canal section, since the waterway will use a canal constructed east of the Tom Bigby River. The canal will have less impact on the ecology of the area. Because the upper reach of the Tom Bigby is so narrow and so winding, it is also more economical to build a canal than to modify the river. An unusual design feature of the canal section is the chain of lakes concept. The canal will be formed partly by excavation and partly by a levee on the western side. On the eastern side, the water will spread out until it is impounded by natural high ground, thus forming a series of small lakes rather than a straight-sided canal. There are five locks in this section. The lowermost canal lock is near a place called Cotton Gin Port. Though it's hard to imagine now, this was the northern terminus of river traffic in the late 18 and early 1900s, when majestic steamboats carried passengers and cotton to the ports of the Gulf and returned with supplies for the plantations along the river. This trade has long since vanished in the shallow, unpredictable waters of the Tom Big Bay. The canal ends nine miles north of Aberdeen, Mississippi, and the waterway follows in the natural river channel to Demopolis, Alabama. This final segment is called the river section. The Aberdeen Lock and Dam is near the upper end of the river section. Like the other locks and dams, its purpose is to hold back water to maintain a navigable depth upstream. From here, the waterway flows through the Tom Bigby River Valley, past towns, villages, sparsely settled areas, and an occasional plantation home, like Waverly, a showplace of the antebellum South. Near Columbus, Mississippi, the waterway reaches the Columbus Lock and Dam and continues its journey south. Just past Broken Pumpkin Creek, the river flows by Pickensville, Alabama, where Raleigh Ryan operated the last ferry on the Tom Bigby River. Though the waterway meant the end of his ferry and his livelihood, Ryan believes the Ten Tom is vital to the growth of the valley. Beyond Pickensville, the waterway flows through the Aliceville Lock and Dam, which was the second completed on the Ten Tom. From here, it heads south and reaches the Gainesville Lock and Dam. It is unusual in that the dam is separate from the lock, which is built in a cutoff channel to save navigation miles. Finally, flowing 50 miles southward, the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway reaches its southern terminus at Demopolis, Alabama. From here, river traffic will travel to the Gulf on the Black Warrior Tom Bigby Waterway, which was completed in 1915. 
An interesting design feature of the river section is the use of cutoffs to reduce travel distance. The cutoff at Rattlesnake Bend is only one mile in length, yet it saves nine miles of travel. There are 20 cutoffs along the waterway, which save about 30 miles. Before Ten Tom could be started, it had to have a sponsor who would guarantee to fulfill the requirements of local cooperation stipulated by Congress. For Ten Tom, the requirements included building highway bridges, modifying water, sewer, and drainage facilities, and providing public terminals. The Alabama sponsor, is the Tom Bigby Valley Development Authority. In Mississippi, the sponsor is the Tom Bigby River Valley Water Management District. The overall advocate for 10 Tom is the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway Development Authority, a congressionally ratified compact between Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Florida. We feel that the impact of the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway will not just benefit a few counties, in Mississippi and Alabama, but will be regional and national in scope. One cost of 10 Tom is measured in personal sacrifices. Though only a few are affected in comparison to the size of the project, some people are losing their homes and land. Mr. and Mrs. Sherman Loveless of Payton, Mississippi, were relocated because of the divide construction. They were upset by the move and reflected sadly on the old home place they had to leave. Had to leave, but we we had to. We moved there when we married in 1915. And we lived there till uh, Tom Big we run us off. We went to housekeeping there and we'd never moved. Stayed there 60 years. As for the new house, Mrs. Loveless says... Well, it's not home. I don't like condemning anyone's property, especially homes that have been passed on from generation to generation. But we could not build the waterway if it were not for the fact that we could acquire property. But we honestly try to treat, treat everyone fairly and give them fair market value for their land. Another cost is the environmental impact of 10 ton construction. There will be a significant alteration of the environment. A free-flowing river is being changed to four lakes in the river section, and many miles of canal is being excavated through the countryside in the canal and divide sections. Thousands of acres of hardwood bottomland, valuable as wildlife habitat, will be inundated. Peaceful, scenic areas will change. Fortunately, not-so-scenic areas will change, too. Tentom is the first major waterway to be built in accordance with the National Environmental Policy Act, and its builder, the Corps of Engineers, has a commitment to protect the environment. I've been involved in the environmental planning for the Tentom waterway for approximately seven years. Over that time frame, I've seen a tremendous change in the, in the sensitivity for the environment that's been displayed by all the members of the Corps staff, not just the biologists and the people that you would expect to be concerned with the environment. They're very concerned, of course, but you see it in the design engineers. They come to us with, to the environmental staff with ideas that they think will help improve the environmental conditions. Corps environmentalists, scientists, and engineers carefully assess the effect of the overall project long before the first shovelful of earth was turned. And as construction progressed, they studied each phase of the project to determine ways to avoid environmental damage wherever possible, to minimize unavoidable damage, and to take advantage of opportunities to enhance the environment. Many improvements were made in construction plans as a result of these studies. For instance, disposal areas for dredged material had been screened from view. The disposal areas will blend in with their surroundings as the natural vegetation returns to the sites. The Gainesville Spillway had an ungated section added to provide a continuous flow, which is not only picturesque, but improves the quality of the water by adding oxygen. 
The location of the Columbus Lock and Dam was changed to preserve Plymouth Bluff, an area which has great geological and paleontological significance to scientists, educators, and students. The Corps will build and develop environmental education centers along the waterway. Government-owned lands adjacent to the Divide Cut in Mississippi will become state wildlife management areas. An independent board of prominent consultants closely monitors the Ten Tom planning and construction and advises the Corps of Engineers on environmental matters. A number of state and federal agencies have been involved in extensive environmental studies along the waterway and the acquisition of additional wildlife management areas is being considered. The Corps' commitment to protect the Ten Tom area includes the past. In the ages before recorded history, thousands of Indians lived in this region, and then early explorers and settlers came to this area. Now, an effort is being made to study and preserve the traces these people left behind. The site was found several years ago during a survey and was found to have prehistoric ceramics, prehistoric lithic or, or stone material. We have also uh, 19th century material. It also, this spot was, was deemed the most likely place where DeSoto may have crossed the Tom Bigby River. When we're talking about the prehistoric components, it's periods of time for which we have no written records. The only things that we have are the material items left behind, the material artifacts. And by collecting them and keeping track of where they are found, both in terms of horizontal space and vertical, we can reconstruct lifestyles. This site, particularly, we didn't realize it had a, a large archaic component. The archaic is a period that we uh, do not know enough about. Well, we don't really know enough about any of them, but particularly the archaic and we've got a good collection from this site. In general, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with what the Corps is doing. It's, we're, we're able to do a lot of archaeology that would never have gotten accomplished and learn a great deal that we wouldn't have been able to uh, if it had to rely on private funding. Economic development is a much hoped for benefit of the Ten Tom. The surrounding area will have a dependable navigation channel which will provide industries with economical water transportation. Near Cochrane, Alabama, the first private commercial port has been completed. And on April 28, 1979, a towboat with four barges carrying soybeans from this terminal became the first commercial tow to use the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway. Yellow Creek Port has been built at the northern terminus of the waterway. At Mobile, the Alabama State Docks has a $75 million construction program underway to upgrade its facilities to handle the increased shipping which will result from continued growth and the opening of the Ten Tom. Many businesses are starting up along the waterway and it shows the faith local people have in the Ten Tom. Jobs created by Ten Tom Construction have resulted in improved standards of living for the workers, their families, and the people of the communities along the waterway. Ten Tom Construction has also provided job opportunities for minorities and women. Affirmative action programs are helping to ensure everyone a share in the economic growth of the region. It really raises standard of living for the people in this area because before this came about, why well, the wages were fairly low, you know. So it gave, it gave the man a chance that hadn't been making very much to make a decent salary. Kathy Vesey drives a giant dump truck in the divide cut. Kathy needs her salary to support her family. And as she says of Ten Tom, I think I'm lucky to be working on it. Larry Fuller is president of a construction company working on the Ten Tom. I think by our participation on the waterway as a subcontractor has basically, uh, for lack of a better word, I say pretty much launched us 
you know, into the type of uh, uh, construction that we've always tried to get into, you know, on a large scale. Recreational facilities are planned for the Ten Tom Waterway. They will include picnic areas, group shelters, boat launching ramps, fishing decks, campgrounds, nature study centers, and wildlife observation areas. The waterway will create 10 small lakes with 42,000 acres for water recreation. The attendance at these lakes and recreation areas is expected to be over 4 million visits a year. But perhaps the most important story of this waterway is the care and concern for the environment. Never before have environmental changes been weighed so carefully and carried out under such strict safeguards. Never before has a board of independent consultants reviewed so closely the impact of a construction program upon the environment. Perhaps never before have so many people cared so much about what happened to a stretch of hills and to a river. Meeting the challenge to produce an environmentally compatible project will pay dividends when the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway is completed. The waterway will blend into the hills and forests and the Tom Bigby will still be a river that can be described by the immortal words of Robert Louis Stevenson. Dark brown is the river, golden is the sand. It flows along forever with trees on either hand. Thank you.